you know, you just have to keep moving forward. You can't, you can't rest on what you've done in the past. You know, you're, the past never gets anything done in the future, so. It's a career that actually began on the football field. The young Greg Gadsden was an outside linebacker at West Point, class of 1989. That's where he formed many of the ties that brought him eventually here to Fort Belvoir as the basis new garrison commander. As I thank God for all his blessings, please know that I'm acknowledging that he worked through the hands of so many of you. Greg Gatson and I played football together at West Point. He taught me how to be tough. He taught me what the standard was in terms of how hard to hit and what was acceptable and wasn't. And uh, I remember every day going out in the practice field and having to line up across from him uh, and just getting the crap beat out of me because it, it, hitting him was like hitting a telephone pole. Gadsden was in Baghdad in 2007 when a roadside bomb exploded. He was blown right out of the passenger seat. Well, I was uh, returning back to my headquarters uh, and, uh, and I was returning from a memorial service and uh, that's when I was hit about 9.30 or so that night. You know, I, I distinctly can remember the flash and, then, and that muffled kind of a boom. So I was ejected from the vehicle. I said, God, I don't want to die in this country. Medic Eric Brown tied the tourniquets that kept him alive, praying with him on their way to the nearest medical facility. He didn't get those tourniquets on my legs when he did. And pray with me when he did. I would not be here standing with you today. I lost my left leg a week after I had arrived at Walter Reed. You know, the vessels in my... Um, and my leg were just damaged so much that they, they, their structure didn't, didn't make it. And, and so they had to take my left leg above the knee to save my life. A week after I lost my uh, left leg, they, uh, they took my right leg. Ironically, his injuries wound up the catalyst for what would happen next. The summer after he was hurt, he received a visit from his old teammate, Mike Sullivan, who, since their West Point days, had become an assistant coach for the New York Giants. The following season started out slowly for the Giants, and Sullivan invited Gadsden to talk to his team. He talked them all the way to a Super Bowl win. You're looking at a man who lost his legs after an explosion in Iraq mangled his Humvee. Not exactly someone you'd expect to then become part of the Super Bowl champion New York Giants. What they were trying to accomplish, nobody outside that room could affect. And if you can focus on that, if you can focus on each other, then you can truly achieve something that uh, is special. The Purple Heart and three bronze stars, and now he's got a Super Bowl ring, minted for a true giant. Gadsden has spent the last few years as director of the Army's Warrior Transition Unit, helping other wounded soldiers manage their careers, while pursuing what may turn out to be a second career of his own. Let's see if we can't buy the world another day. Lieutenant Colonel Greg Gadsden, an actual decorated war vet, knows all too well the struggles of his character in the film. I'm a field artillery officer, was a battalion commander in Iraq, Good. and I lost my legs to an IED. My character. Mick Canales is certainly someone I could identify with. I could obviously bring my personal experiences of recovering from these injuries. Keep your feet together. My feet can't get any closer. I did not think I was going to end up doing as much as I did. And the stunt guys uh, came up with some incredible ideas, strapping me into a uh, camera dolly and moving me back and forth. And when I would punch, it you know twisted my body naturally while I was strapped to the chair. And he said, I've not thrown punches like this since I lost my legs. That was a cool moment. Retired Army Colonel Greg Gadsden, a former athlete and a war hero, is now on a new mission. He's a motivational speaker with motives of his own to encourage veterans to get help dealing with the stress of war. For veterans, what I want to say is, look, we're always out there for each other. But you've got to take the first step display the courage, the courage in some cases that you've displayed in all your military career to go get help. Greg's one of the typical prototype Army football players. He was a born leader. He led on the field and he led off the field. He made us all better every day in everything that we did because he led by example and that's why he was so successful in the Army. 